Hello and welcome to Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. It's Patricia Steer and Mark Sargent, and we're going to talk flat things with flat people in the flat chat on the flat screen. <laughs> Hi, Mark. Hello, Patricia. We're talking flat, 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 flat. And we have delicious libations. <laughs> I don't know if they're delicious. Well, but, they're, uh, uh, they're here. Okay, I'll do mine first because mine is obviously boring compared to whatever exotic thing you've got in that glass. <laughs> uh, this is a simple glass of red wine. And I'm not endorsing or anything, but I do like the label because it's... Uh, Menage a Trois. That's Menag from uh, Troy. Napa Valley, right? Yep, Menage a Troy. Been there. Lived there, actually. Yep. It is a uh, California red wine. And I'm drinking it. All right. Out of the bottle or a glass? No. <laughs> well, you uh, never know. That, it is, after all, you. <laughs> that is true. No, you know what? I actually have a glass in this case. So there you go. All right. And you I are have, having a... I have my old standby, which is a frosty tumbler and a glass straw filled with vodka, vegan vodka, not using fish swim bladders, and um, some organic grapefruit juice. Really? Vodka and grapefruit juice? Effective. And cheers. Yep, yeah, cheers. It looks so, everything looks big when I hold it up here. This glass looks as big as my head. Look how huge my hands look. Oh my God. What a lush. <laughs> it's really actually small, but all right. Look at this giant glass of wine, which I am holding. Your hands look as big as Shrek's. Oh wait, they are Shrek. Uh, you know, I am, I'm seriously, I'm using that line in every speech that I do this year, except for maybe Dallas, because I, I use that thumbnail from... Uh, the PewDiePie thumbnail, yes, where yes. you and I are on it. Mm -hmm, and, yeah, which was great, although they used a photo of us that he tinted somehow to make us both look like we're literally dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we were just on the borderline of actually being zombies. In Beige that. and grayed us out. And you remember what I said, that even you on a slab after three days is better looking than most people? Yeah. And then you do that to me, <laughs> and oh my God, DreamWorks, the cease and desist letters, Again, flattering, and I'm not complaining really that much. It's like, hey, flattering, I made one of PewDiePie's thumbnails. Uh, and I mean, flatter that actually, that's, that's great. That's flatter. great. Yeah, hey, yeah. fantastic. But at the same time, oh, my God, did you have to make it look like that? Mm, exactly. But, you know, they, they say that in, when it comes to thumbnails, the thing that, which is why you see so many of the same type, Right. And that is you, uh, the, the thing that gets, never works with me, although apparently with the general public it does, uh, you, you get your best results if you have a face with some sort of reaction. Yes. That's, that's what, I mean, they, every YouTube thing says it. It's like, you got to show up. It's like, what, what such and such reacts to this? Also and put an arrow and circle something in red. That always, exactly. That red you or can't yellow. see. <laughs> you're circling and, something that you, you I mean I'll put a circle anywhere with right a, with and an it arrow doesn't have at. to even be circling anything important or pointing at anything at all that has yep. anything to do with the video so yep yeah because it's, <laughs> yeah. it's um in fact they do that it, th those videos is like oh you know 12 things in this movie you missed right and they just literally draw us nothing it might as well be just a white <laughs> puffy cloud <laughs> with an arrow point at it. it's like come on those things work that's why those channels have bazillions of subscribers and yeah. um they, they We've only got for... Ginger from Gilligan's Island as my thumbnail. Nothing circled. Oh, well. Oh, right. Yes. Right. Well, I try to spice up the thumbnails a little bit with yours. I've been using a lot of Jessica Rabbit lately. I saw somebody on your re-upload, which you do Friday because we do the secret show Wednesday. You take right. the same show and put it on your channel. Some people right. don't know it emanates from this channel, and they'll write in the comment section things like, this show doesn't get any views, you know, after you've just released it for about 15 minutes several days after it's been on this channel anyway and then somebody else wrote because he used the jessica rabbit one they said that's an ungodly satanic image <laughs> okay <laughs> jessica rabbit really <laughs> Cartoon? by the way just Je jessica rabbit was the inspiration for um well no it was actually the movie who framed roger my rabbit. hairstyle today the what <laughs> my hairstyle today yes exactly well i mean you got you got long red hair and jessica rabbit you know She's not bad. She's just drawn that way. I actually use that line in the book, believe it or not. 
for you? I Because I was writing a section. Uh, it's a tell-all book, as you know. Uh, you know what? We needed to talk about that. But I want to let everybody know, hello in the live chat, by the way, and thanks to those who are watching it, not live, but at a later time, please give the video a thumbs up. I want to tell everybody about all the things we're going to be talking about amidst frosty libations and for you a room temperature back i was about to say mine is not frosty <laughs> in the slightest but we're going to discuss satellite balloons the great gravity debate where do you stand if you watch the last Globusters? and by the way this is may 29th wednesday so you'd have to go to the Globusters just prior to this we're also going to discuss nick from the channel phuket word who i have interviewed um a video with he and i is on my channel he did a counterbalance to a PhD and associate professor at Wilmington, Delaware, Wilmington University in Delaware. Uh, and, and that doctor was looking at behind the curve and basically saying, well, I'll get to that. Uh, the guy's name was Todd Grand, and he analyzed flat earthers. And like I said, behind the curve, we're going to be talking about FE Core releasing preliminary force, the level test results. And we were going to have Chris Van Maitre on today to discuss that, but he's on vacation uh, out with his family in a different state and doesn't have access to a computer. In fact, he's out with his family right now having dinner, but he will join us next Wednesday to talk about the preliminary force the level test results, which is kind of a Brian Mullen, Mullen force the line test and you've probably heard about it already but you know only preliminary results have been put out and we want to find out what what's what the story is so sure. next week chris van matre but i've got a little bit of insider info i'll let you know before that um we're going to be talking about like mark said his new book what's that all about new book. And your appearance mark on australian tv yeah also i'm going to give those of you who love space a way to invest in the space travel that will never occur but you can invest nonetheless if you want to just throw your money away um we'll talk about the calgary conference that recently concluded and uh, the upcoming take on the world conference and um flat earth meetups and we're also going to say a sad goodbye to a flat earther who has left our plane and wish a happy birthday to several flat earthers many truth seekers who have just celebrated so hopefully you've got your beverage of choice let the secret show begin there are links in the description box to a whole bunch of stuff so since you already mentioned your book, let oh, everybody God. know about your first book. Okay. This new book differs. Okay. The um, the first book, a lot of people don't even know that I, I wrote a first book, but it's on Amazon and it, it shouldn't I be have it. I know. <laughs> uh, it, it shouldn't be a big shock what it's called. It's called Flat Earth Clues. And it, again, was one of the unsolicited responses I got from doing my content, which was I, I put the clues out there and a book publisher out of London called me and they said, hey, how would you like to turn it? Well, it was actually a, a nice um, British woman who is also uh, East Indian. And she, um, and her name's Lisa Newton, by the way. And she said, hey, can we turn your book into, or your clues into a book? And I said, sure. And I said, what do you need from me? I'd like to do the, the minimum amount of work as possible. <laughs> and she said, all you have to do is send me the transcripts. And we'll do a quick little Q&A thing. And so they whipped it up. And I honestly didn't think anything was going to come of it, especially after the whole Metatron thing, you know, that whole deal. Oh, gosh. I honestly didn't think. I mean, seriously. It's like, well, it's a bit, it, you know, somebody says, oh, hey, I want to make you apps. Hey, I wanted to, you know, publish a book in your name. Hey, I want to do a website. It's like, whatever. Producers come and go. But in this case, she was absolutely serious. And let, it, I think maybe two and a half months later, boom, I got a box of books, copies of books. And it's like, it's on Amazon right now. We're splitting the profits. It's like, awesome. Great. And then I had a reference point for it. Um, And that was, can you believe it? That was three years ago. That that all that all happened. That is crazy. I mean, we all talk about flat Earth time and how it goes at a rate that I don't understand. Yeah. Even before flat Earth, I did notice as I got older, time seemed to speed up, and I was that was explained away to me that when you're young and you are just going to school and you have no cares, no worries, no bills, that you know summer lasts forever or it goes by really fast because you're having so much fun. You don't need a clock into a job, and so therefore time seems to drag on. When you get older, of course, responsibility kicks in, but I don't think that's it. I actually think time is weirdly speeding up, although there's no way to measure something like that. No, there is, but you're absolutely right. It has been speeding up. But like, flat uh, did time, you I mean, wow. I can really only tell flat earth time by my hair length. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Car you know, Caroline. Um, my videos, you know, Car that's it. Caroline Walter called me up and or messaged me and said, hey, do you guys, you realize it's been a year 
since we ran into each other at the um, at the Colorado Springs meetup. I said, really? It's been a year? Wow. I know. So anyway, a lot has happened, as you know. I mean, you've been there for the whole thing. Uh, it, Good a lot and has bad, happened. happy and sad, up and down, all around, from transgender accusations <sighs> to shill calling, which never stopped, to, um, I don't know, the whole Metatron thing. So, oh, by yeah. the way, I hate to interrupt on the flow you're going with, but my right. app is back up in case anybody cares. It's linked in the description box. It's not really? going to spy on you. If you don't want it, you don't want it. I, I don't money and, out of it. And if you I want encourage it, it's there. It's anyone, by the way, that is paying 10 bucks a month for MarkSargent.com, please, please stop. <laughs> stop paying. Because I don't, I don't get it. The app is the one getting the money. But yeah. for me and my app, totally different than yours. He just threw that in as a bonus for me because I didn't have a website. But mine's yeah. free and it has no advertisements on it. And all yeah. it is is just a list of my current shows. This show is basically filtering over to that app right now. Right. And I've had the app on my phone forever and I could download it. I could delete it from my phone. Then I could re-upload it and show you what permissions it asks for. And it's not those permissions that some of those videos said. I don't know what they were looking at or how they concocted their videos. But right. anyway, who cares? Accusations will always come. And you with your second book, what are they going to say about that? I mean, that... Uh, oh, it's going to be it's going to be different. For, uh, for It's actually quite the opposite from the first one. First, the, it will come out in book form before it ever comes out in video form. Uh, it is a retrospect. It's sort of an expansion of the speech I'm giving this year, which you heard once or twice, uh, you know, how we got here. And because a lot has happened, and I realized as I was trying to sum it up in a, in a very short speech that there is just a lot of stuff, tons of stuff that have happened in the last four years or since 2015 or whenever anyone got into this. So uh, Robbie Davidson was bugging me about it. He's going, you really got to write a, a book, man. You got to really get on that. You know, how he talks really fast. And I started hearing this from other people where they say, hey, you know, you've got enough stories already that you could probably write a, a book just on this. And I said, yep, I can. So I will give you the chapter list. Uh, right. There's uh, 13 chapters. Notice I said 13. Mm -hmm. I know, right? Well, I wasn't going to make it 33. It was you could have made long. it 23 because, you know, the film, the number 23 and that number. Yeah, doesn't... but my emails already got 23 in it. Yeah, that's true. Right. And that was Where randomly was chosen for me. Did you know that? Interesting. When I went to Comcast and I said, seriously, I just said, the reason was is because a lot of people when they came back or they joined the military, M Sergeant, military sergeant. Oh, yeah. So there was like one, two, three. It's like freaking i just kept going until finally it hit 23 and i was like bing you're different than me well in many ways but in one of the ways if somebody if i were trying to get a new email address and it was offered to me uh my email address is miss steer at gmail.com mm -hmm. but if it said miss steer two at gmail.com i'd be like sorry and i'd keep coming up with something else so i wouldn't have to have a number you're right? And and now you're absolutely right. I would have done that. However, when I, I guess get you how long I've had this was in the nineties, how long ago I've had this. The reason why I don't it's like why every once in a while someone will give me grief and say, Why well, you got a Comcast email address? That's really stupid. <laughs> Nobody's it's like, dude, Comcast is was like the bomb back in the day. Well, it's not AOL, so there's that. Well, yeah, I was I had AOL too. I was an <laughs> AOL, AOL consultant kids. I mean my sister had AOL at her house, and I remember... Everybody had AOL. I never did. And my What'd you have? Were... There was only three. There was AOL, there was CompuServe, and there was Prodigy. There was only three of them out there. I think maybe I had Prodigy. Oh, lame. I don't know what I had. <laughs> Aren't I you, really like, don't embarrassed? <laughs> but, oh, how about this? My first email address was Hotmail. Oh, that's not so bad. There's people yeah. out there with Hotmail cons. Well, it was Miss Steer at Hotmail.com, and I think I started that one in the 90s. Can't remember. Nice. But uh, people who didn't understand what Hotmail was then would make jokes about that. Miss Steer, mysterious, hot. And I'm like, no, no, no. Hotmail is a thing. It has nothing to do. Ugh. Yeah, I know. And it's mostly guys that, make, you know, they're, in fact, we were joking yeah. about that on after the show last night where uh, there was a woman that would call into tech support. And they would always announce her over the PA system. Uh, and her name was Kathy Topping. Kathy and, Topping? Yeah, which, is, which isn't that bad. It's kind of ambiguously sexual in a way. And like, you can hear these guys. You, sexual? You, you, or you mean Topping? Kathy Topping, like 
I know, I know. You, you, your mind goes in a certain ways, but I remember the guys around me. You hear this. <laughs> it's like, you guys are killing me. I just think of like something topping a cake or. I, I mean, it's a good, if you did an expose for Playboy, I could see, you know, Kathy Topping's a good stage name. It's a good stripper <laughs> name. Uh, strippers have last names. I don't think they do. Every once in a while, I think they do. Fake names. Although it's easier to, yeah, go with one name like Anastasia or Portia with a, with a T. Bambi. Bambi, Candy. I mean, how many freaking candies are there? No offense Wait, to the actual what candy. about Slatina? <laughs> Ooh, Slatina. That sounds like one of Karen B's movies. Okay, so the well, it's not, or it's that's right. I'm supposed to. I'm actually writing here. Actually, I'm just. I. It's funny you mentioned that because I'm actually down to the Karen part. So this chapter is actually taking longer than I thought because. Okay, let me write off the chapters to you really yeah. fast. Okay, uh, chapter one: look away. Two: how we got their speech. Three: experiments. Test, observe, repeat. Four: the questions. Five: how NASA failed. Six, which is what I'm on now, which is called Word on the Street, which is basically my personal stories of you know people that have influenced me along the way. Uh, you're not included. Uh, seven is Behind the Curve. Eight is Subject Matter Experts. Nine is Friends of the Family. Ten, Enemies of the State. Eleven, Why F.E. Matters to You. Twelve, The Flat Earth Problem. And thirteen, End of the World. I end of the, the World. Titles. What? I love the titles. I like oh. End of the World. Hmm. Well, it play on words. End, End of, of the, the world. world as we used to know it. Yeah, yeah. It's There's so many different ways I'm going to go with this. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, it's going to be much bigger than Flat Earth, or, you know, Flat Earth Clues, the original one. In fact, the title of the book is called, so the first one was called Flat Earth Clues, The Sky's the Limit. This one is called Flat Earth Clues, The End of the World. I'm sorry, End of the World, not The. Flat Earth Clues. Right, because the other one's called Sky's the Limit. Sky's the Limit. Not the. Okay, good. No, actually, it might be called the Sky's the Limit. So I'll leave it up to them, whenever, whatever, however they want to do it. I don't really so, care. When is this tome coming out? Oh, well, this this opus. Are you using a, a feather quill pen to write it? Uh, yes, I am writing it longhand. Uh, By candlelight? Instead of ink, I'm using human blood. Oh, no. well. Was that too far? May have been too far. No, no, I'm. I, I should as have a rough draft. As long as it's the blood of our enemies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't comment. So I, I've been working on it for a while. I should have a rough draft done by the end of June, and which is good because my schedule is now getting even weirder. Uh, and so, like in. The end of June, beginning of July, I'm heading out to Indiana to meet with uh, Roland Reddy. That is cool. We had a <laughs> fake Roland Reddy in the live chat trolling. I think I know it's who that was. Um, anyway, so I noticed that. I'm like, wow, that's crazy, a fake Roland Reddy trolling. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh, and then after that, I'm going to – I don't know if you want to jump into this real quick. I'm go I am going to be attending and I think speaking at the Take on the World conference. Yes, I mentioned that in the opening. So that sounds exciting. Who uh, how did how did you now? Did you bring? I mean, was that on your list because you knew I was going, or you yes. just bringing it up? I knew you were how, going. How did you know? ESP. You mean ESPN? That's a sports network, but that's okay. Yeah, well, I uh, wouldn't know that. All right, so um, I heard it through the grapevine. Yeah, I was about to say a little bird told you. All right, fine, but there's so many birds. <laughs> Game of Thrones ain't got nothing on flat Earth. Very, very true. We got spies everywhere. So I will be doing that. And then the other conferences, uh, Stockholm, UK, Mount Shasta. Still haven't gotten my invite for Amsterdam. N wink, nudge to whoever's out there. And Dallas, Texas, of course. To, to exciting, exciting. Yeah. Let's see. I'm going to Mount Shasta and I'm going to Amsterdam because I was invited. Unlike you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see that glass. Um. Is the glass half full? Or is yeah, I was about to say, empty? really? You're going to throw that at me? <laughs> you almost did a little head bob because I was invited. Why didn't you do if a little finger wiggle? If I could do that wiggle? head thing, I would, but I, I, I'm kind of unable to do Yeah, that. we are super white. Well, yeah, and also I just don't have that kind of neck. Your, your neck actually doesn't work that way. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I wish it did. It would come you know, in. Are you that whole, mm -hmm. you know, that you whole thing? you finger wagging as well. I can be finger wagging. <laughs> just just do you wanna, shake your shoulders at the same time. It kind of gives that same effect. Point, pointing, point at me and call me Mr. Man. Mm. Mm. Which some people are into, I think. I don't know. Anyway, so that yeah. So a whip, not a finger point, but okay. Anyway. 
so yeah, take on the world conference. This is gonna be my first one. Uh, hopefully, I survive it. Everybody Who's else going is... to that one. <sighs> Just about everybody who was at the Canada conference that was at the LA conference. So Rob, check. Bobby, Robbie Rob, Davidson, check. Um, Rob Skiba, check. Rob Skiba, Nathan, Nathan Reynolds. Mm -hmm. uh, you remember him? He was the last speaker. Uh, he's. By the way, did you know? Here's a little trivia for you. Did Gosh. you know? Did no. you know? And I, I would have put this in there. I just haven't known Nathan that long. That uh, he asked me. Maybe I did tell you this, but we talked. We talked off air, which was uh, he asked me after his his set and asked me my critique of it and you know what I would change. I go, man, I wouldn't change a thing. I go, I go. It's really polished. I mean, you're he's wearing a suit now. You know when he's nice. when he's doing it, and he and I said, I go, how many of these have you done? And he goes, two, including this one. I go, uh, what? <laughs> I go, for it. I go, LA was the first time you got on stage. You know, and I go, he goes, yeah. And I go, wow, without notes, without a laptop, without anything. I mean, he just gets up there and talks. You know, his experiences, you know, his, his childhood wasn't exactly uh, rosy, a little bit rocky. And it was burned into his head. And I mean, he just raw motion. He can summon it and very articulate. Awesome. So I, I said, don't change a damn thing. Some people just have it and he does. Yeah. In fact, I wouldn't even add slides. I just let people, you know, think about yeah, what he has saying. a lot of personality. And also he works the stage physically by walking around. Right. Which is a sign of a person who's either really good at things naturally or a practiced public speaker. I don't know if his topic is safe enough for like a TED talk, but you know, cause I mean, he's I basically built for a TED talk. Just yes. That's what my phone is back do. and forth. Just exactly. leave the logo up on the screen, one logo. And in Who fact, I think he's going to that, uh, take on the world. <sighs> Dean Odell is going. <laughs> no, you don't want me. You really you're gonna, Look, you're gonna bait, you're gonna bait me into talking about that. No, no. I, is he going? Rory has just he, appeared. He, wait. And there oh, he goes. giant cats <laughs> take over the stage. They look so big because they're very close to the camera. Uh, I'm actually amazed. Did did Roy walk over the keyboard? Right in front, there's a space of about six inches where the oh, microphone's. So, about to say because I would have panicked. This <laughs> and also, there's like a random makeup brush here. No, is is in, Dean in going case, to? While we're sitting here, I could. Is, like, is Dean going to take on the world? I don't think so. No, I don't know. I was wondering if he was. I, I can't no imagine he would be because he's got his own conference he's got to deal with. Uh, Skyfall. Skyfall. Okay. Yeah, that's that. Right. That's his. Yeah, we we won't probably we don't want to address that during this. We'll talk right. offline. No, we don't. No, I mean, you caught part of it, right? I mean, you and I. I got you right here. Right. We. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Anyway, sorry. What what's on your list? Let's awkwardly segue into what's on your list. Um. Well, um. Did you watch Globusters? last Sunday, this past Sunday. I heard about it. Well, there's a rumor out there in radio. Oh, the Globe, the Globe Busters is breaking the up? The Globe Busters is done. That actually <laughs> what preceded Globe Busters being done, I and mean, this is a rumor, don't anyone tell anyone after all, this is just a secret show. You know, it's not right. like we're telling anything and not important, just secrets. What's that live button mean? That's weird. I don't know. It means nothing. I right. love the fact that you actually looked up there. That's <laughs> awesome. Even though she cannot see it, she looked in the right direction. It's absolutely to her left. Well, the rumor mill says that Bob and Jaron, you know, duked it out during their, their big um, what is gravity actually discussion on the last Globusters. And they actually came to fisticuffs because either Jared went to where Bob was or Bob went to where Jared was and there was a brawl. Somebody got a black eye. Somebody lost a tooth. And <laughs> Globusters is just done. Right. No, that didn't happen at all. <laughs> it was a very interesting discussion. I missed it live because I was out, but I went and caught it later. It was a very interesting discussion about gravity. And I know that you have said that you believe in gravity but not the way we've been told about gravity no because you as as you've heard many times science doesn't even can't even break down gravity no well, they don't know what it is they just know what it does I exactly think they only said. know what it does and exactly. so that's my out which is like if they say well it's this mag magical molecular force that pulls things down i go fine that's what i think too the only difference is uh, mine pulls it flat you know down to a flat surface and yours pulls it down to a globe well, you might be in the Bob Nodell 
camp, let's say. Uh, Bob says gravity, we'll use the word gravity because we can't use any other word, okay? We right. can't really say it. So we'll use the word gravity for this. Yeah. That, that it is a weak force, but that is magnetic and electrostatic. Right. And Jaron says, I mean, down is down, not just buoyancy and density. He's just all about density. Um, there's no force required. Down is earth. Period. Te technically speaking, and Do again, I'm force. I mean, I know David Weiss believes in what Bob is saying. There is a weak force. Right. So uh, technically speaking, you remember, I'm not an actual scientist. I only play one on YouTube <laughs> is that uh, they're both right which is there, I mean, technically, remember, we're breathing in, what we're kind of swimming around here is a thin version of water that is invisible to our eyes, which is four parts nitrogen and one part oxygen. So there so is a buoyancy. Say, the what? Videos about what we actually are breathing isn't really what they say it is, and oh gosh. You know. Well, no, no, you can, you can, anyone can measure it. It's not hard. It is f literally four parts nitrogen. It's barely oxygen. You remember the channel Peter and Peter? I think that was the channel. No, there was a gay movie of that name, but it's How not the, probably know? the same. But I digress. Continue. Okay. <laughs> I, well, some guy on Grinder recommended it to me. Anyway, do go on. Yes. Uh, anyway, yes. So um, if you haven't watched that Globusters, I encourage you to do so. I put a link in the description box. It would be interesting to know where everybody stands in the live chat. Maybe we should take a little poll. It would only really make sense to you if you watch Globusters, if you can follow what I said. Jaron doesn't believe in force. He just says down is the earth, down's down. Uh, um, again, and Bob says it's a weak force that's electrostatic and magnetic. So if you are um, in with Bob and kind of, kind of you, put a two in the live chat. If you're and, down let, me get in, let me get in 30 more seconds on this, which is yeah, technical. We, we all know there is some. Put a one. There, there is buoyancy because when you take a helium balloon and you let go, it goes up. Same thing with hydrogen, same thing with fluorocarbons. We know there are things that are lighter than what we're breathing right now, and they go up. So, the, of course, there is some sort of buoyancy, but that buoyancy wouldn't necessarily explain if you are in a cockpit of an airplane, which is sealed, airtight, and you pull up on the thing, what is pushing you back into the seat? It is not the force of the buoyancy that is around you. It is also something else. So, and, and of course, the argument from the, the globalists is, well, if it is buoyancy, there's something holding down. It can't be just buoyancy because there's something holding everything down. You know what I mean? Meaning, you know, there's, it, it, there's a reason why it's here. And again, we get stuck in the same argument, which is, you know, science says it's gravity. And I say, well, you know, something along those lines arose by any other name. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Huh. Well, I'm just taking a, a brief look at the chat in our very unofficial voting system. Most everyone is saying two, which is going with Bob and what he believes. Some people are saying both work in tandem, or by that they're saying 1.2. Um, and uh, in fact, Bob says 1.21 gigabobs. <laughs> That's good. That's the uh, that's the ref back to pop culture reference. Back to the future. One point, um, uh, whatever it is, uh, gigawatts, gigawatts, Giga gigabobs, giga gigabobs. <laughs> that sounds mildly racist. We probably shouldn't dwell on it. I didn't mean to say it. No, no, it's all right. It was a rookie mistake, actually. <laughs> no, 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 gigabobs. That's not. <laughs> It's, it's 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 writing that that line. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, um, what the unofficial poll says is that. However, Cammy, Bob's wife, says she votes three, and I don't know what three means. Something totally different, or a combo of one and two. So yeah, I, don't know. Cam I, I actually had a little section on Cammy in the Word on the Street because. She deserves as as much credit as Bob does. You know, behind behind every great man is an even greater woman, from what I'm told. Hmm, good to know. And without Cammy and Bob together, they wouldn't have formed their ridiculously intelligent and scary son, who can will eventually evolve into a living computer. Well, I think at this point he's taking down all of the nuclear uh, bombs <laughs> the all launch across codes. the world. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh, he's disarming the entire disarming nuclear, every, nuclear arsenal of the speak, world. Actually, see, meanwhile, Cammy and Bob are both in the live chat, and they really don't know what's going on upstairs in the on the other computer. So, right, Jer and their son, kind of just making the world a safer place. That is, if you believe in nuclear bombs. And don't like, for one, kind of don't. So anyway, don't ever let him watch war games yeah, with Matthew true. Broderick. You know, if he watched war games with Matthew Broderick he would probably be bored because a lot of younger people are bored by those quote unquote old movies from the eighties. Although I think they're classics, but that's because I don't think the concept <laughs> would be lost on him though. True, true. He'd probably look at it and go, Oh, I could totally get into that system. <laughs> this was back when there was almost no security and people just didn't know, even know what a computer was. Interesting. Anyway. I remember hearing about the internet very early on. And I had no internet access, but I heard it was there and I was thinking it was some kind of under underwater underground cable system. I don't know why I thought that. You and Al Gore would have been in the same boat because he said it was a bunch of tubes. <laughs> he used that, well, actually reference yeah, more than once. Something in common with Al Gore. So people who called the inner tubes. I guess I need to drink more. The entire webnet. Anyway, mm. what else do you want, what else do you want mm. to talk about? Mm. Calgary. Let's talk about it. Now, I know that it's been longer than one would assume since why I'm talking about this now. It's been quite a long time. But for those who don't know, Not that last long. week's secret show was preempted due to Google messing around with the Hangout capacity and not making it possible to do Hangouts. Right. So we had to skip the entire show, which was annoying. So I've brought some of those topics from over there, over here. So, yeah, let, t tell us a little bit about the, the, the Calgary conference. The Calgary conference was wonderful. It was really well done. You know, it's one of three conferences this year that are being put on by women, which I thought was really amazing. Uh, meaning uh, the first one was done by Adrian down in New Zealand, which you were at. And then the women can do everything men can do and backwards in heels. I, I and in heels as well. Yes. <laughs> uh, the second one was done by Sarah Stewart up in Calgary, Canada. And the third one is going to be done by uh, Roxanne Glenn out in the UK. And which is anyway. So this one was done by Sarah Stewart up in Calgary. It was the first time going into the whole the conference thing and she did it after being inspired by the LA conference which you and I attended and she basically grabbed most of the speakers from LA and drug them up here to, to Calgary and it was a no frills really bare bones conference and it, and it went really really well it wasn't done at a hotel it was done at a community center you know a, with a big meeting room a beautiful venue and everything went out went off basically without a hitch with the exception of a few audio issues in the beginning but that always always happens because you know you don't get a chance to do a dry run but sarah like, has an interesting backstory she was thrown out of canada's largest church for daring to talk about flat earth right sarah stewart who was not a bronze uh, um, medal winner at the olympics in figure skating nor was she a keyboard player for brian adams uh, she was recently though, I, I had to say that during when I was doing a show with her. I remember. I, yeah. I, I love creating some, little fake backstories. Some for people. strange world 199. Yeah. And people actually were buying the, uh, the, the figure skating thing. Well, or not. I remember when Jonathan from Jersey was on with you long, long ago when you yeah. had me on your strange world as a guest, when I first started my channel, maybe I'd done three videos, not really any with you. Maybe I interviewed you, but I was doing them with Stars Our Souls. You and Jonathan started saying I was a spy and an agent. <laughs> and because you were making a funny story, haha, uh, that stuck. So the things you were doing to Sarah Stewart when I was listening to Strange World 199, I was like, oh no, poor Sarah. <laughs> Believe it or not, yeah, I had Mystic. emails along those regards. People were sending me music and stuff. They'd send to Sarah. I don't know if she knows about this new keyboard that's out. And it's like, oh boy. Did you say that the song Sarah Smile by Hall & Oates was written about her? Oh, <laughs> that's so great. I am so grabbing that. Sarah Connor. I mean, that character. Sarah Connor was after named her. after right, Sarah. Right. <laughs> oh, wait, what was that one? Sarah. Sarah, uh, was that um, Starship? No, 
Maybe. It was one of those bands I never listened to. It wasn't Mario Speedwagon. (laughs) Was it Jefferson Starship? (laughs) Maybe. Or Starship. They went through many programs. Oh, yes, right. Uh, Anyway, the point was uh, she had an interesting uh, backstory. Well, it happened literally just before we got there. I mean, it wasn't. Toto, according to Bob. The who? It's Toto. Oh, Toto. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Don't like him either. (laughs) Yeah. No, I'm not going to use that reference. Nobody likes Toto. So, uh, only Dorothy, only Dorothy. Yeah, the, the, see that movie ruined the name. I mean, is the name chosen because of the dog? No idea. I don't. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, so the largest church in Canada, a mega, what they call mega churches, with uh, pushing ten thousand members. You know, a yeah, lot. Well, there's one here in Houston. Yeah, yeah, big. Well, yeah, Texas, of course. You know, the TV evangelism—that's a big thing. So. They uh, they had heard that she was going to be putting on her this conference, and she's been part of the church for a long time. And the you know this is when you have a church that size, you have multiple pastors, a lot of pastors, you know, like 30, 40 pastors. And the head pastors, uh, the head you know, like the lead pastor, singled her out. Well, I mean, you heard the show, and pulled her off into another room and says, "Yeah, you know, basically, we're showing her the door." They say, you know, they can't officially kick you out. It's not like the church has a lot of muscle sitting at the door that they can just throw you out at you know, just be, for no reason. You have to be making a disruption. And in this case, it's like, yeah, you you, you know, this line It's like we don't think it's it's almost like you're getting fired from a company, which is we don't think you're a good fit here. We think you're probably happier in another congregation. And, you know, and she knew fully what it was about. The, she didn't, basically she didn't what, just say you door and point no no i mean they were trying to be as nice as they could but they wouldn't even bring up flat earth as a reason because you can't and it's not a legal thing it's because you don't want that that to get spread around so the example he used and anybody that listened to strange world 199 would know this is that they use the mormons kind of like the mormons would come in and try to take people away from the congregation so they were basically comparing flat earth without using this by name as a religious organization that was going to take people away from the congregation. And that is not true in multiple areas. One, we we have no interest in taking people away from any congregation, but that's also not the reason that he was so worried. He was mostly worried because he didn't want the flat earth sticker to be attached to his church because that would give license to other churches to poke fun of him which is, hey, this particular member from this church put on a Flat Earth conference, and they had no problem with it whatsoever. Therefore, by association, this church may be leaning Flat Earth. And I so- heard that um, Joel Osteen and Victoria Osteen have gone flat, and the Lakewood Church, the big Christian mega church here in Houston, that's got 52,000 attendees per week, are all going to be bathing in the glory of Flat Earth. Oh, wait. You heard this? No, that was a rumor. <laughs> <laughs> And by the way, that is a that is a mega church. Fifty two yeah, thousand. Mm-hmm. That's huge. It's right near the car dealership where I got my car. So anytime I have to go there to do any, you know, sort of um, you know, oil changes and things, I see that church and I just I I've never gone in, but I would imagine most people watch it from their homes via simulcast. Maybe. I think it's probably very social. I think people go there to see and be seen, to dress up, to schmooze. Right. And I don't really think they're going there for God, but maybe <sighs> some are. I don't maybe. know. Maybe. Anyway, don't so she's still dealing with it now, and uh, I'm helping her in any way that I can work, you know, work on, on these guys. And, and, and there was a couple members of the church, yes, that were at this conference in, in, on our side. And there were a couple people that were neutral kind of as observers. Hmm. So interesting. Interesting that, uh, you know, and again, this is not something that is unusual. As you know, there are congregations out there. And the biggest problem, and I don't want to go into chapter and verse, I'm not going to turn this into a sermon because uh, it's Wednesday, which is because no Sunday I could give a sermon. Absolutely. I could. But uh, being that it's Wednesday, most churches have a problem because the only Bible verse, you know this already, uh, that even hints about a globe is Isaiah 40, 22. He that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. Well, in the ancient Hebrew, my good people, <laughs> circle is not ball, it's not sphere, it's not globe. Correct. It's, it, it's circle. And they're trying to use it like it's got veto power over every other book, including Genesis, including um, 
uh, the story of Joshua, the story, the Tower of Babel, you name it. They're trying, they're, that's it. And they're trying to lay that out and they're having a tough time. So it's like, please, please, you know, with that, that's the only reason all the churches haven't fallen in line. That is it. That one verse. Otherwise, they'd have real, real problems. Anyway, I wonder if Joel Osteen here in Texas and his wife have ever heard about Flat Earth. Maybe I need to I bet you they have stickers and go over there on a Sunday and cover every single car with them. In the do they know that it's the wipers? Do they maybe do they know that it's a thing? Probably. There's probably mm -hmm. I mean, come on, after the Netflix thing, come on. Mm -hmm. Ace McLeod says he's been to Joel's cult rock show, he calls it Joel Olstein, and he said it was a, a very weird place. I have no idea. I don't think I'll ever be there. So I really don't know. All right. Other things going on. There's a guy named Sam S. Fahani who is putting together a truth slash flat earth conference. And it's in Lisbon in 2019. How did you hear about this? Because I've got eyes and ears. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Fine. You read an agency briefing. Mm, Big whoop. Well. It's going to be end of summer, July, maybe August or something like that. And right now he's looking for people and volunteers who want to help. And uh, you could uh, message him if you'd like. Do you have contact and information for this I person? certainly do. And I'll put it in the description box of this video, but I'll say it right now. So if you want to be involved in a Truth Flat Earth conference in Lisbon 2019, uh, end of summer, end of July, or maybe August, they're not sure yet, contact Sam S. Fahani, and here is his email address, qstlive at gmail.com, qstlive at gmail.com. He's also on Facebook, Sam S. Fahani, E-S-F-A-H-A-N-I. Once again, qstlive at gmail.com. So that ought to be cool. Let's see. Um... Oh, you know, there's something really sad that happened. What? There's a guy named Billy Matthews. He was born in 1979. He's a flat earther and a truth seeker. Well, at least he was. He took his own life and died on May 18th of this year, 2019. Hmm. Billy Matthews. And many people on Facebook, when that occurred, were exchanging words of kindness about him. And because we didn't have our show last week, I was unable to bring it up. So farewell, Billy Matthews. I'm not sure exactly what happened in his life where that occurred. I know he has a child. And um, I send love to his family. And I have to say that I don't know, like I said, what caused him to take his own life. But being a truth seeker, being a flat earther, as he was, isn't easy. And maybe his issues were other than those. But it can't make whatever his issues were any easier. Hmm. So if you know somebody that's having problems, reach out to them. Because hmm. it could be just one kind word. And I'm not saying we're responsible for his death. But in a way, as truth seekers, we all are tied together and in some way responsible for each other. So if someone's having problems drop them a Facebook message or, you know, if you know them personally, make a call on them in person or telephone wise. Anyway, so just wanted to let everybody know that we did lose another flat earth or hmm. another one named Guy who died uh, two years ago and um, he killed himself as well. So hmm. it's sad, but I figured since this is a show that focuses on the community such as it is, I'd mention Billy Matthews, rest in peace. Hmm. You know, I get, as you know, uh, emails pretty much nonstop, and I have read through thousands and thousands and thousands, and I've, I still to this day have not, and I would have told you, uh, I have not received any sort of cries for help in that regards, you know, where flat earthers said that it was too much. You and I, you know, I talked about this back in 2016, where I was worried that there would be a small percentage of people that wouldn't be able to take it to deal with it it was just too big for them and there have been several people that that felt somewhat they use the word claustrophobic that the world is being the universe was being changed from this giant vast place to a one-room apartment 
However, none of them really expressed any sort of distress, and I'm about as open as anybody. So, you know, I'd like to think that whatever was going on in his life was was mostly external forces. Because mm-hmm. uh, I have yet to run into somebody that said, you know, that said that Flat Earth is, is going to kill me. Uh, as opposed to me, which is completely different, who absolutely wants to die in a vacuum chamber. Which is, you know, being a martyr, which is different. That's true for the cause, which is never going to happen because the people who have those spacesuits are never going to loan you one because you'd have to have one of them get in another vacuum chamber at the same time and then go into vacuum mode with a suit on. And they know, I don't know everyone, but the powers that should not be know that they die or that you die and that their your death would prove the whole space agency nonsense from every right. single country a huge lie and space itself right what went wrong why did mark Sargent die and so, i and i hope that people erect some sort of uh, modest memorial in my name just, just where would you like that to be the memorial mm-hmm. uh the island? that's a good question i don't know it's yeah probably that. would be and then on your headstone it would just read one word unsolicited Oh, that's nice. Because Mark, as anyone knows, has never tried to get an interview on any media outlet. And he's never tried to get a book written. He's never tried to get anything. No nope. kind of fell in his lap. Yep. <laughs> and, and you can hate me for it, but uh, it's not my fault if I didn't try. Don't hate you because you're beautiful. Exactly. <laughs> no, that's your line. Don't, don't, don't hate me because I get opportunities that other people try for Rob Rob Skiba was the perfect example of that you know when he said uh, he goes how many times did you have to solicit solicit coast to coast before they had you on and I said what now <laughs> solicit <laughs> what <laughs> what? <laughs> you mean you can call him <laughs> and and he had that pause on the other the phone he goes you didn't have to call him did you and I go I have no idea what I'm doing man so don't give me any grief I, mean, I literally and I are hmm? only connected because before I started my channel, I wrote you an email because your email's in your flat earth clues. Right. And I said, I, I, you know, you woke me up and, you know, exchanged some niceties and you messaged me back and said, give me a call. And I didn't because I didn't have a channel started. And I thought it, it, I'd almost be like a fangirl and I don't want to do that. Then I started my channel right. and then you made a comment and everyone knows when Mark Sargent makes a comment on your channel and your channel's tiny, you're like, oh, wow, he, he really likes me or something. <laughs> feel happy that you're noticed by anyone not just mark Sargent. when a bigger channel notices you you're like wow that's cool oh yeah 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 that's but true the truth was you didn't know i was that same person that wrote you that email long no ago. no i completely <laughs> forgotten your name well because no you look when you write me and you say hey out of the 50 disaster movies that you recommended you owned 48 of them and you know you've been to my house and you've seen i have seen them which is <laughs> again Super strange because I don't even own 48 of them. I just say I watched them, which made you like super interesting. But at the same time, I was like, oh, that's cool. And then there was no real follow up between us until months, months later. And I think you heard about my channel. Correct me if I'm wrong, because D-I-T-R-H sent you a link and said, check out this girl. Is that how it happened? Well, no, check out. I, well, what caught my eye, and I hate to say this, uh, but you, you know what I'm going to say, is... I love this one. You had really, really short hair mm. and I saw you and stars are souls. Mm-hmm. And I looked at you and I, and, and it happened to be around the same time uh, that one series Homeland was firing up with what's her face. Um, uh, we know what's her face. Yeah. 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 No, no. You'll know exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about. She's also from, hang on. You have to look uh, her up. Homeland TV show. I didn't even know. Cause I don't watch TV. Uh, the lead in that was, Homeland TV series, sorry. Do, do, uh, Claire Danes. Do. Oh, Claire Danes. You, you, you might as well have been Claire yeah. Danes' sister with, yeah, with that, I had haircut. that same haircut. In fact, I was squinting at the screen going, I need glasses because <laughs> I, uh, I didn't know. And it's like, oh, okay. Well, she looks kind of like Claire Danes, which is kind of weird. So that's why, yeah, caught my eye. And then here we are. Go figure. Yeah, strange how life worked out. And yeah. uh, then eventually I did call you and I forgot how that happened. And we talked on the phone for several hours. Right. So. Right. And well, we, we both tend to be pretty chatty. 
Yeah. So <laughs> it was kind of like this show, but like. Well, yeah, which is why this show. This why this show <laughs> even know? happened. When all of a sudden we're we're talking for hours, and then we realize it's like we're just burning production value. That's funny. <laughs> we might as well record it. Well, someday I will cut my hair short again. Although my hair isn't. Uh, Are you going to warn anybody before you do this? I never warn anybody before I do anything. Uh, <laughs> I might. I mean, I'm not. One thing well, I hair, can't your, say. Your hair is so amazing long. It will always be red from birth till the grave. And well, yeah, but you don't have to completely. I mean, I remember why you, you whacked it off in the first place. Oh, always women cut their hair short. Well, some do because they've had a baby and I have not. But uh, many women do because a relationship has ended and they want a change, a new perspective. Right. And at that time, prior to Flat Earth, a relationship ended of mine. And I right. did. So. I, I'm sorry. I'm just a big believer of if, you know, don't, if you get a good, if something's not broken, don't fix it. And more women have, I've seen more women comment on your hair now because there's so much more of it. Because yeah, it's like everything else is freaking flawless and it kills me. Thanks for saying that. Mm. And those who wonder, wait, she's vegan. Her hair's red and she's 56. How does that happen? She doesn't use animal products. She can't be using chemical hair dye. You are correct. I use henna. Organic henna. It's a powder made from a plant that's dried and powdered, and you mix it with boiling water and apple cider vinegar. And Spell it, it for the audience because they're not going to know. H E N N A. And it henna. makes my hair look exactly the color it was when I was young. So yeah. I'm very grateful that henna naturally is a reddy, reddish color. Nice. So, cool. But then again, people who don't use henna and use chemical dyes do you. Um, let's see. <laughs> Five Arts Liberella says, maybe put a piece of your cutoff hair into the next FE award show. <laughs> it's so weird and creepy. <laughs> People, well, if you do cut your hair, save it. <laughs> well, you'd give it to Locks of Love, which helps children who have had chemo and lost their hair have hair <laughs> via wigs. However, I'm anti-chemo. So, you know, you know, when you go to a store and you're checking out a grocery store or whatever, and they say, would you like to donate a dollar to children cancer? I always say no, because I know what that means is big pharma and horrible poisons that the children will be subjected to. And how did they get cancer to begin with? Were they near power lines? Were they, were they fed bad foods? And of course, sometimes you just get sick, of course. Right. I do want to not take that away from anyone who's lived life righteously and then has an illness. It could happen to any of us. Right. But I don't give to those charities because I know the money doesn't go to cure cancer. There is no cure. Don't run for the cure. Run from the cure. Oh, that's good. Not the band, and, the cure, by the way. Uh, Crank them up. <laughs> My last point on this is that the Jessica Rabbit hard-boiled detective look from the 40s is timeless. Love it. You know, especially with, and I remember your shot from way back when for you uh, with your hair over one eye. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. That's, I think I was. I mean, that is the Jessica then. Rabbit look, which is mm -hmm. weird because I don't even know if you were gunning, gunning for it then. Uh, if I could only have the face I had back then with all the knowledge I have today. Whatever. Don't we always think that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, again, you this are is so... wasted on the young. It is tough. I Seriously, I actually have you just kind of... You don't know this, but I have a software thing on the other side which kind of pixelates you out because I don't like looking at you. <laughs> I might have to go get another drink. It's primarily grapefruit juice, by the way. Tiny yeah, I was about to say, it. wait, why would you have a second I drink? I, I, nothing, so. I was going to write in the book that you only have one drink. Yes, but when I make vodka grapefruit juice, I'm too afraid to overdose uh, with too much vodka and then get silly on the show. So I kept it to a minimum. I mean, even Rory the cat watched me pour and he said, come on, that's not a heaven pour. Heaven forfend <laughs> your composure should drop its guard for even a second. And then I'd get all blushy and sweaty. <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> not good. Uh, I do want to, before I get a drink, and then I'll turn it over to you to talk oh, about Oh, I'm something. covering? Okay. Well, not yet, but I do want to say happy birthdays to some flat earthers. And if I've missed you, that's because you're not a Facebook friend of mine. But if you're having a birthday and you want your name announced on the show for whatever reason that might be, you know, you can message me at misssteer at gmail.com. So, uh, Saul David Guzman, his birthday was May 22nd. Let me see who else I've got here. There are a couple of other people, a bunch of other people, in fact. Nathan Gonzalez's birthday was also May 22nd. Um, scrolling here on my phone where I try to take note of all of these birthdays. And for whatever reason, oh, there's one 
um, no, sorry. I know this is very boring. Sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, there we go. Um, what are you Canadian? <laughs> uh, Super One Green, who is associated with um, Phuket Word, Nick, um, and Super One Green. Uh, it was her birthday on May 24th. Um, let's see who else had a birthday. Sorry. Oh, Sienna Collins. Shauna Collins. I always Sean say Co Shauna Collins. Shauna Collins. Her, her name is spelled S-E-A-N-A, -A, so I always say Sienna, and I'm always wrong. Uh, her birthday was May 26th. And who else? Um, Jason DeBose had a birthday. And I think there was one more person in this list. Austin Armstrong had a birthday on the 27th. Um, and yeah, happy birthday to all the flat earthers out there whose names I haven't managed to, to know. So yeah, cool. Cool. We lost somebody, but flat earth lives on and all of us flat earthers live on. Um, I'm going to do, play a little game with you. See if you know who said this. I'm going to read you a famous quote. One of the saddest lessons of history is this. If we've been bamboozled long enough, we tend to reject any evidence of the bamboozle. We're no longer interested in finding out the truth that bamboozle has captured us. It's simply too painful to acknowledge, even to ourselves, that we've been taken. Once you give a charlatan power over you, you almost never get it back. Who said it? Okay, my first guess would be because uh, he's so quotable, it would be Mark Twain. No. Nope. If it's not, uh, my second guess would be P.T. Barnum. No, those are good, though. Not Oscar Wilde either. One of my favorites. Uh, who is it? Carl Sagan. Oh, that's interesting that he would use the word bamboozle as many times as that. Yeah, I guess. And it's it's a long He was version part of, of the bamboozle, which makes it all crazy. He's the successor who tapped Neil deGrasse Tyson for his current position. And he didn't use the word billions once in that. I meant Neil deGrasse Tyson is the successor to Carl Sagan. Sorry. The Maybe the short I heard that too much. <laughs> the the short the short version of that, which we've all heard, is billions it, and bamboozle. Maybe he just likes B words. Uh, he might. Yeah. Is, or he might have <laughs> is is that it's easier to be fooled than to convince somebody that they've been fooled fool me once shame on you fool me twice won't get fooled again <laughs> name that oh yeah <laughs> you said it. yeah the way you the way you were pacing it yeah yeah i love i love that one uh, <sighs> the, the point is, is you can't be fooled again <laughs> like the exactly. fact that he screwed up which is why no 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 public speaker should use that that phrase i will never use it uh, because it's too easy to screw up, which is fool me once. We all know it. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And I had to focus <laughs> to say that. And that's President Bush. Yeah, it's President Junior. Bush, where he got fool me once, and then, he, then I mean, and he absolutely screwed up. I mean, he's he paused. You remember listening to that? He's got oh, he got fool, lost. Fool me once. He's like, sh sh shame on you. <laughs> and then like, he started thinking about. Won't get fooled again by the who, and right? He just lost it completely. <laughs> yeah, he was he was gone like right yeah. in the beginning, and that's when he paused. He's like, and he's like frustrated. He's like, the point is, is you, you can't be fooled again. It's like, oh my god, stop, stop. Him. <laughs> oh, he was terrible. He's hmm. just terrible. I mean, uh, anyway. So, sorry. Uh, what do you want? Me, do you want me to cover? Do you want me to do the the what's been happening in the news while you're getting another drink? Yeah, do what's been happening in the news, and I'll look at what's happening in my freezer with the vodka and in the refrigerator with the grapefruit juice. <sighs> Got so, it. Wait a minute. I, for those of you who think I'm an alcoholic, <laughs> I'm not. I am. <laughs> that is so good because as you're getting up, that's exactly where I was going. <laughs> I am indeed an alcoholist. That's okay. So appreciator that, of, but only occasionally. To the bar. That yes, that's like being a mixologist, only uh, different. No, Patricia is is not an alcoholic in any way, shape, or form. It is amazing that she's actually having a second drink. I've been out with her many times to meals. She will order one drink and she will nurse that thing until you've finished your meal, your appetizer, your dessert. You've eaten the napkin. And her drink will still be there, and you'll probably have to finish it for her. 
So let's get right to what's been happening in the news in Flat Earth over the last month. Things that kind of caught my eye. Uh, first off would be, in fact, if you type in, just follow along, kids. So type in Flat Earth and set the filter to one month in YouTube, and you'll see some interesting things. First off is the Center for Inquiry. Why this thing is showing up at the top of the list, well, I've got my suspicions, because they only have, I think, 20,000 subs, and it's not even a verified channel. Uh, like they used to do in the old days. Back in the old days, you used to be able to get a verified channel with less than 100,000 subs. Now, not so easy. But the title of the video is called When Skeptics Meet Deniers, CFI Investigations, Group Test, Flat Earth Claims. And that's interesting because it's basically the Salton Sea experiment from last year when uh, National Geographic, I mean, literally a full year ago, uh, in fact, they even say it in the beginning, in the June of 2018, yeah, I know, I was there. I was with National Geographic for three days and we went out to the Salton Sea. And <clears throat> it wasn't even National Geographic that paid for the experiment. It was this skeptics group out of Los Angeles. And they completely botched everything. One, they were, they were supposed to start at 5 a.m. They did not. Uh, the balloon experiment was cut out of the National Geographic segment entirely. The raft experiment was ridiculous and non-scientific in any way. And it was hot as beep. It was hot as balls out there. Horrible. It was horrible. It was, and yeah, you were wilting. I was dying, and I made it to the freaking bitter end. I was the last person there, and we, after hours and hours and hours, man, we got up at the crack of existence and the drove crack out. Crack of the, existence. I like it. <laughs> it's true. It was early. I mean, we were there from five. Some of I was there from five a.m. to what noon or one. And then we ended up going to, you went to the hotel, and I ended up going to a, a deli where we ran into people. I think I told you, and the, 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 the girl that was running the checkout counter, she was one of us. And we didn't know until after. She's like, who are you guys? You know, and of course, we're flat earth. And she throws us the sign, which is awesome. So that's the what's at the top of the list. And of course, Jim Underpants, or I'm sorry, Bob under, Underpants, whatever that guy's name, Underdown. He's, he's the thumbnail, and he shouldn't be on there a year later. I don't know why they're bringing this up. That's so weird because I saw the video. I'll link it in the description box. And I am I got filled with righteous indignation. Oh, uh, yeah. And I went and made a comment. And I've got a list of several Flat Earthers comments that I'm going yeah. to read. I, yeah. uh, the second one down is Studio 10, which uh, is an interesting segue. It was the Australian interview that I did. Wait, hold on. Before we go there, let me read some of those comments that were on that Salt and Sea thing. Okay. Because they're from fellow Flat Earthers. <clears throat> Sure. Um, I, mine, you know, I just wrote, I was there at the Salton Sea that day. It was overwhelmingly hot and that caused weather conditions where not only did I feel I would pass out, visibility was severely diminished bit by bit as the sun came out. The curve of the earth didn't block your view. And this is to Jim Underpants and the rest of the crew. <laughs> Under down. Right. Okay. The curve of the earth didn't block your view. Weather conditions did. And I continued to write in my comment, if you had started very early in the morning as promised, instead of when you did, the heat wouldn't have caused the visual impingement of observations over the body of water. Early in the morning, when it was a bit cooler, we all could see the other side clearly down to where the water met the beach, a distance of 9.6 miles, which itself proves there's not the curve we've been told exists. We also saw other landscape features in the distance. By the time you had the experiment set up, weather conditions changed due to the heat from the sun and visibility was impaired. That's what heat and humidity do. Right. The selection of that place as a test spot was basically a no-win situation for Flat Earth. It would possibly work if it were a cold day, but it was incredibly hot and moist with only a small window of time in which to get a good visual due to the ever-changing weather conditions. Fluctuating weather conditions do not prove a globe. Right. And I wrapped it up by saying teams of Flat Earthers went back time and time again and proved no curve simply by getting there before the sun warmed up and doing various other tests. Right. Uh, we, Flat Earthers, filmed it. We made videos. Do the same experiment over a very large frozen lake on a clear day, then you'll see, literally. So yeah. Uh, yeah, a bunch excellent. of people commented, you were there, and commented, I was there at that test as well. Funny how National Geographic, who shot for three days, used only 10 minutes, and in the process edited out their own nine-mile balloon test because it proved what many of us know. Dave Hinkle wrote, another Flat Earther, extremely dis disingenuous. Why can we see more water and land behind your curvature on the boat? Chris Van Maitre wrote, 
if you think the earth is a globe, you need to do research. One, very poor atmospheric conditions. Two, angular resolution of your eye. Three, perspective. And then he wrapped it up by saying, you can clearly see the horizon beyond the boat. Water is always flat. Ryan on the island wrote, it's obviously flat. <laughs> I mean, that's the best comment. Simple, very simple. Right. You came back and left another comment. Thank you. One of your, you know, standard stamp type comments. Thank right. you for introducing your subscribers to the flat earth concept. For anyone who is curious, ask yourself, how do I know it's a globe without using a space agency? It's harder than you think. Do your own research. Never stop asking questions. Long live flat earth. Uh, yep. Let's see. We've got NAS Gilhuli who came and left a comment. Surprised you didn't use an infrared camera or laser to prove your point without the very well-documented atmospheric distortions this mediocre experiment presented using standard lenses and infantile maths as fact. Somebody named Container Yep wrote, Earth is flat. <laughs> Bipolar Flat Earth wrote, This is what really happened that day. For anyone who cares about the truth, James Underdown lying through his teeth. Then he linked a video. And a whole bunch of other people came in and wrote many things. Bipolar Flat Earth was going back and forth, leaving all sorts of links. And uh, it, somebody named World Shirts came and said, and yet at four minutes and 57 seconds into your video, you can see the water behind the flag, which is impossible on a globe because the water should be below the curve. Um, on and on, Dan the Waterman wrote, OMG, we were there. These people lied. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks to everybody. And I know that since that video came out, many, many, many more people went and commented, but I only have screenshots that I took right after that video came out. So yeah. I mean, uh, wonderful that flat earthers just went there in droves and let the truth be known. It was awesome. It was a, it was fun to be there. I was so happy that so many flat earthers showed up on a Sunday morning at so, so early after we had, you know, been partying the night before. In the middle of nowhere in a place that had dead fish bones all as over. sand and yeah smelled like fish so well yeah you just, well you didn't did you ever see the pile of dead fish that was just just beyond visual range of us i smelled them <laughs> it was awful it was just terrible it was an awful awful place and <clears throat> again and i'll talk about this in, in the in the book thing which is national geographic deleted the entire balloon sequence it was didn't even exist we shot they shot everything for a long long time the balloons would have proved our point in fact, come on, you were there at 5 a.m. We could if see the, the lights on the beach at, if, on the other side. If the evidence doesn't fit, it's not you must acquit. For them, it's you must delete. Really? Going to throw in an O.J. Simpson reference? Yeah, why not? It's good. O.J. like trying to fumble through those gloves, <laughs> which looked like they were shrunk in a heat lamp. So you were going on with another story. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, the second thing down is is Studio 10. Uh, because of the Australian interview that I did on the Australia Today show, mm -hmm. uh, one of their rivals, Studio 10, called me up and they said, hey, how would you like to be piped in? And it was amazing because we did this without satellite link up from the affiliates. You know, the with the Today show, I had to, actually had to go down to an affiliate in Seattle. And with these guys, right next door, literally right next door, it's like, oh, yeah, we can totally Skype you in. It's like, what? <laughs> It's like, why didn't the others? The others didn't Skype me in because they just didn't do that sort of thing. And then at the end, it's like, oh, no, we're losing the satellite feed. And and like the guy at the transmission, oh, we're going to lose the satellite feed. I'm going, what are you talking about? What satellite feed? It's all fiber optic. So we shot this sequence, and it was, I think, five of them on the couch with, the, with me uh, coming in through the big screen. And they brought in a NASA engineer from that neck of the woods. And he got a chance to debate me on stuff. And the points he brought up were so rudimentary. Oh, it was awful. Uh, you know, Chips, like what? Horizons. Oh, uh, the Felix Baumgartner jump. Oh, gosh. Even if you believe in that and you watch the whole jump, you see that the curve of the Earth, it wouldn't make any sense. It would make Earth yeah. really small, the size of a state. And yeah. also, you look at two different views, one while in the cockpit and one while he's standing outside ready to jump. Right. The Earth looks different in both. A child could see that. Right. It was, but it was fine. I mean, I got the last word and I got all my points across and I thought it went about as good as it was going to get. And the producers were happy and everything was great. So, and they let me put it up on my channel and there's one up there and it's fine. Just another one in the bag. It was, it was good to, it was good to get out there. What I thought was interesting, I will, I'll end that part on this, which is they, I asked him, he asked me how we're even talking, right? Without satellites. 
and I, you know, I mentioned the high altitude balloon program that NASA is doing, and he immediately said, "Oh yeah, I work on that." Right. I'm going, and I'm like, I almost developed a facial tick. It was like, uh, you're not. But he didn't it. make the connection. Yeah, it's like, uh, that's my point. It's like, yeah, the high altitude. You basically verified my point right then and there, which was uh, maybe it was accidental. Who knows? Maybe it was helping me. Either way, he was an American, so I can't give him too much grief in this case. Um, other videos down the line, Wisecrack, uh, how conspiracy ch changed. They're trying to link flat earth to anti-vaxxers. We're going to be hearing that more and more. Satellite yeah, TV on flat earth. I was just interviewed again by a woman who interviewed me for an article in the Houston Chronicle. And that article is called Spheres of Influence. I'm looking up because I have it framed on my wall. Uh, the woman's name is Carrie who did it. And it had like eight pictures of me in this I remember her. room. And it was a great article on Flat Earth, of course, after they let me talk and printed what I said pretty much to the to a T. Uh, they had experts come in and debunk me. You know, what do you expect, right? right. I mean, have you seen behind the curve, <laughs> right? Um, experts in quotes, of course. But anyway, uh, Carrie called me again and wanted to know if I was a moon landing denier. And that was the term she used. It's kind of like uh, anti-vaxxer. These are quoted terms that they that they try to pin on people, which belittles them as human beings and intellects. Right. I do not like being called a moon landing denier or an anti-vaxxer. I just don't believe that vaccines are what as effective as they say, although I had vaccines when I was young, but only a few because I'm much older than children today who are getting so many in such quick succession when they're so young. Uh, and there's been links, although some say they're not very strong, to um, autism and other things. And I believe those parents who know their children well and say things like, little baby Susie was great, fine, learning, almost, you know, doing everything right. And then vaccine, sick, and now she's autistic. How did that happen? Right. And um, I feel bad for parents who are doing what's best because the doctors have told them what to do and what happens to their child afterwards. They will always forever feel responsible. And I, my heart goes out to them for sure. I would... I would like to think, and I'm not going to go into the big vax thing because you've heard me say it many times. Yes. I would like to think that there are doctors out there that know the real scoop, that that can figure out what's going on, that figured out if you delay certain vaccines for just enough time, your chances go way, way up in terms of success. And I'm hoping that that and word of mouth uh, helps us out in the long run. You know, kind of, it's kind of, and not to say that that happens in the Soviet Union, but word of mouth is a big thing. Look, mothers talk to each other a lot and they, you know, and, and professionals will, you know, especially if they're, if they're close to the family, will say, okay, look, I'm not supposed to say this, but, and then it follows up with whatever. So, you know me, yeah. I'm a big believer in clandestine operations. Well, there's people who are public figures who spoke out when pregnant with a baby, couples or single moms, and said things like, I'm not going to vaccinate my child. Um, and what happens is they are descended upon through the magic, and I put that in quotes, of social media with pure, unadulterated hate, including right. a tattoo artist, public figure named Kat Von D, who has a line of cosmetics called Kat Von D. Whether you like tattoo, black clad rocker chicks or not, that part doesn't matter. She did speak out that she was not going to vaccinate her child, who the baby she's now had, and she just was torn to ribbons and sales of her products went down. Huh. And that's what happens. We <clears throat> become a society that is taught to self-police. In right. fact, Think about how we were taught at a very young age to laugh at the flat earth with the picture of the old ship going over the uh, all cosmic the waterfall. Yeah. Right. And when it comes to anti-vaxxing and all of that, we've, we're given a term anti-vaxxer. It sounds so negative. And we're taught to laugh at these things. We're taught to laugh and mock at anybody who steps out of line. It's very 1984. And um, I, for one, are, am purchasing Kat Von D makeup products because although the company was sold to Estee Lauder, which animal tests, she herself still has part of the company in her name and, and money does go to her. And I buy her products because they are vegan and also because she was bold enough to step forward and express her point of view. And I know that she probably looked into it. Now, I don't know 
if she bowed to pressure and did indeed vaccinate. She didn't really talk about it after that. Mm -hmm. Hard to say. I mean, but it, they can get to anybody. I mean, you saw what happened with Robert De Niro. Yes, exactly. And we discussed that on one of our secret shows a way back with the uh, with the film that he came out with. Right. Well, no, not that he came out with. It was his film festival. It was his, his film his festival. His film festival. Sorry. And the movie, is the movie got released regardless. It was called Vaxxed. Vaxxed. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was, he was going to show it. And somebody, you know, the lawyers got to him and said, yeah. Well, it's like we those sports people who come out and say, hey, Earth is flat. And then they're kind of pulled back in. And well, you know. well, here's one. You'll remember this one. Remember when Oprah said she was never going to eat hamburgers again? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> that didn't go over well. Right. Who, who knew that the beef council, the beef council the was going to call her up and say, dairy you do board. that again, we will bury you. Right. <laughs> and she did. She backed off. She said, yeah, I probably was. It's but, about but I mean, money. People are afraid to lose money. That's the thing. And that's sad. And yeah. that's what marks flat earthers uh, different than most. We've decided regardless of our job, regardless of what family members think, regardless of the impact it might have on uh, our future economic development and growth, you know, right. we've said we've, we've stood up to be counted. Right. And I really commend everybody because it's not easy, but it's necessary to be honest about what you believe in and to be strong in the face of criticism, which will Agreed. Happen. Absolutely agree. I mean, you know me, I'm willing to literally go to the wall and put my life in, in jeopardy. Hmm. But that's also sort of a death wishy romantic side of thing. Too. I don't think it would be romantic at all if you died. Oh, that's nice. Um, but don't have you ever watched Unless a movie? Unless you died on a white horse. <laughs> no, because I'd be sad for the horse. Um, well, I'd have to actually. I'd actually. Die? There'd, there'd be a secondary yeah. thing. I'd actually sacrifice myself to save the horse. Oh, that's super romantic. Well, see, see animals I mean, come first. I, mean, <laughs> I, I know it sounds terrible, and I'm probably giving it away a weakness because there's government agents now taking notes, going, "Oh, we've got this guy." Uh, when you ever see movies where there's a secondary character that absolutely just throws himself in the line of fire to, you know, it's like, no, go, go. Like a I'll red hold shirt. him off for as long as I can. You know that line? A red shirt on Star Trek like that? No, red shirts on Star Trek. No, they <laughs> don't even have dialogue. Yeah. No, <laughs> they were no. just like, he walks over to that side of the room and he dies. They're disposable. <laughs> no, no. There's got to be some interaction. Generally, it's, it's uh, you know. Something we've all seen it. It was mostly, I think, 90s movies that did that, which was, you know, whoever it was, like carrying somebody through lava, which didn't make any sense, or, or, you know, driving your ship into this, into the UFO. And, and yeah, it goes on. Anyway, I, 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 I welled up every time I saw that, those scenes. You would give your life for a cause that you believe in. But I actually think most of us who are involved in this have given up an aspect of our life yes. to be a part of this not our physical being alive and breathing but we've given up things for sure yeah. um i've made myself kind of undateable by any normal person out there unless they want to ignore the elephant in the room which is i'm a flat earther and the, yeah, but when the yeah. when the scales tip you know it's you know how much different though it is since 2015. i mean we've i mean heck we've met people i mean if the celebrity world gets any bigger you know, there's there's so many people now in it. It's just a question of when are we going to get to that stage where everyone just looks at each other. It's like, oh, you were in it too? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was in it like three years ago. Where were you? It's like, oh, man. Well, so. hey, there's a, an interesting story that came out, and it was a small story. I don't know if you caught it, and I'm not sure exactly what it's all about, but it comes to us from Cape Canaveral, Florida, and uh, it's it was uh, through Reuters, but a bunch of other uh platforms had it too. Right. The headline, NASA executive quits weeks after appointment to lead 2024 moon landing plan. And you read that and you go, ooh, maybe this person knows the impossibility and they might I know. I saw that. Yeah. So um, a top NASA executive hired in April to guide strategy for returning astronauts to the moon by 2024 has resigned. And what NASA is saying, it's the culmination of internal strife and dwindling congressional support for the lunar initiative. There's no, well, yeah, in fact, I they, mean, I'm hoping he's 
one of ours or at least knows a little bit about the truth. Did you get a chance to watch the video that NASA released uh, less than a week ago? I don't know if I sent it to you called We Are Going. Oh, we are going. Oh, we are going. I just want to smash my head into the wall when I saw uh, that. At, at one point, I thought pure, it was a direct pure response. propaganda. Pure. Oh yeah, absolutely pure propaganda. Check it out if you get a chance. There's no flat earth in the title. NASA isn't in the title. It's literally called "We Are Going." We are going. It reminds me of somebody just needing to go to the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is NASA's formal committal, even though there's no details, on that they are going to be going back to the moon, and this time they are staying. They are going to build a moon base. You know, like that stuff that we were told back in the 70s. Yeah, because now you're going to build a moon base instead of the late 1970s or, I don't know, the 80s, the 90s, 2000, 2010. NASA knows the internet has a very short memory. Yes, they do. So they just and put that out there and they get everybody all pumped up and then they put out a couple of, you know, space programming stories about asteroids or comets or, you know, new Earth-like planets. And people right. are like, la, la, la boom, back into, uh, you know, brainwashing. Yeah, we are going, even though you don't have a rocket delivery system, you don't have a capsule, you don't have pilots, you don't have any, you know, they were saying, we're not even going to, we're going to keep like a, we're going to do a space station around the moon, like an ISS, only this one's going to be orbiting the moon. And it's like, wait, it's, it is all just a huge pipe dream, and it's and it's never, ever going to happen. We all know, you can still watch the montage yourself. Every president since Reagan, has said this literally reagan oh god uh clinton both bushes obama trump i don't know if i missed anybody tough uh they all said the same thing which was it's like oh we are committed to going back to the moon and nobody and like you said the public has a massive really really short attention span and so six months from now nobody's going to remember that headline nor are they going to remember we should might as well bring up the jeff bezos thing which would happen just before the nasa thing where he the remember blue horizons where he, said, yeah. where he basically just took a, a replica, a plastic replica of the Apollo capsule, painted it blue, and put it on a stage and said, oh, we're going to be going to the moon in 2024. Just it's make like, little models and make big claims. You're good. Yeah, it's like, really? So, and what Elon's going to get is what everyone's going to, even though, remember the Google, oh my God, does everybody forget this? Sorry, remember the Google X Prize? That, oh, was, right. that, was, that was two years ago. And no one won it. No one won it. It was canceled. It was, it was like, nope, no interest. Nobody went. It, nobody went. In fact, I, I wrote this in one of my, my chapters. I, I looked it up recently. Remember the whole Israel thing where Israel just crashed a probe on the moon? Yeah, Remember and that? I didn't even know Israel was planning on going to the moon. All that that's stuff just popped point. out of nowhere. That's my Why point. Why didn't they enter? Because in order to, I mean, pretend that you can go to the moon. In order to get something that could go to the moon, you've got years of research and development. R&D team working strong 24-7 in Israel. That is Absolutely my point. And they could have entered for that prize. But they you could, yeah, they were. Wait, that was that it. was it. They were what actually, they that's here's the part that kills me. <laughs> they were actually part of the Google X Prize. Right. And then everyone backed out. What? They couldn't just say, oh no, wait, let's give me an extension. We can totally pull this off. Right. But if you go into Wiki right now and you look at list of countries with space programs, there's only six countries that even have launch capability, right? As of last year, not even a year ago. Israel was not one of them. And they were really specific that have launch capability. Six countries, Israel's not that. And then all of a sudden, nine months later, Israel is impacting a freaking probe on the moon. Supposedly they got a probe that has crashed on the moon right now. How did that happen? How did Israel do it for $20 million? They, they said, oh yeah, even though the, the video, there is no video of it. It's just, just computer animation and one still shot, which could have been, any, any eighth grader could have made that still shot. Oh, I so heard someone say, it, I'm proud of Israel for doing what they did. The Americans couldn't do it, but Israel could. And the next time they'll land. Yeah, whatever. I mean, the Americans didn't even cover it. You know, barely any simulcast coverage. And then after it was over, and remember I watched the um the the Israeli control panel room, the mission control, and it was like they almost knew. The guys are like, they're like, oh, they were really excited. And then it was like, oh. Well, that's it. Let's shake hands, everybody. Let's sing a quick song. And everyone was out of the control. That was it. It was done. Roll the credits. Good night, everybody. It was like, what? It, it was unbelievable. I, I just came out of nowhere. When I heard the story, it was like, what, four or five days up? Oh, I'm sorry. That was the other thing, which was but from launch until that thing crash landed, it was like a full month. And I'm going, what? why would an unmanned probe take a full month to get to the moon? Well, if nothing takes that long. 
I mean, that's like taking a bus to uh, to Dallas from where you are, and it gets there three weeks later. Wait, Very why? interesting. Why did it take that long? Nobody knows. When, well, of course, it didn't happen at all. <laughs> well, but no. It, but why they would you... know the story, they can look up about the Apollo missions and find out how long technically that took. Right. Well, no, that took days. That yeah. wasn't that. That wasn't that long. So this thing took a full month. And again, this was unmanned. Maybe so, it was a Yugo they used. Uh, it was just. I'm sorry. It just. Bl I mean, it was. It caught me off guard as much as Elon in 2017 when he said we're going to take two tourists around the moon in 2018. And I'm. I'm doing the math and my fingers going. You're going to do what in what time frame? <laughs> it's like no, you're not. And then when I heard it's like, oh yeah, by the way, Israel's going to land a probe on the moon, and they showed this little probe with the star with the the fl you know the flag of David. Wait, what's it called? Star of David. Yeah, but what's the flag called? Just a uh, well, know, the flag with the Star Israel? David on it. You know, the blue yeah. with the, mm -hmm. the Star David on, it. and it's actually on there. That's the little thing. It's actually they're showing it go. You know, go away. Even though there was no footage pointing back at Earth, uh, just so awful. So it's why I have a whole chapter called "Why NASA Failed," and I had to keep myself from just typing forever because it's like, look, there's so NASA much stuff. And every other space agency. Yeah. Well, yeah, but NASA was at the, the one. Top connected, even if they, on the surface, don't uh, sometimes yeah. support each other. Yeah, it was it behind was... closed doors. Hey, by the way, you know what happened last night? Do we want to know? No. <laughs> Yeah, no? fine. I went down to the YMCA. I was really, really drunk, and well, one thing led to another. Uh, no, I. Did what? you wear chaps that had the butt part cut out, or were they like full coverage? Well, there was full coverage for a while. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> what? Nobody has grinder. <laughs> no grinder is yeah. a dating thing, right? Somebody told me to get it. So, uh, no, 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 no. I had my two hundred. 200th show on strange world yes congratulations Thank and you. i looked at zulu one's channel it's not there so something must have happened to the recording of it uh it's probably the the music you right, see right. zulu amplifies the the music and if your music is loud and clear enough it will show up on the copyright filters and so joe jackson as you know is still blocking people so, so what night and day is the song yes it, well, well night and day is the album oh night and day is the album Ginger Sugar Bush's favorite song that you play, so, which is Stepping Out. Stepping Out. Yes. Stepping Out. One of my, and the reason why it means so much to me, I think I told you uh, years ago, uh, was that it was one of the first MTV, MTV videos I ever watched. I remember. In fact, it was one of the first in rotation. Dressed in pink and blue, just like a child, is one of the lines. Yes. The song. And Jackson people have been asking me, like, oh, you should sing it because, as you know, I have a lovely singing voice. Uh, people are asking me to sing it. I'm going, look, it's for people with, like, you couldn't pull it off either. It's for people with a high voice. In fact, I said, even Joe Jackson can't sing it. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> it's just his mu it's the musical. The melody is so great that he just kind of, just kind of lilts over the top of it. Whereas I'm really amazed no female, strong female singer has done a cover of that song. Maybe, maybe they have. They should. It's a, it's a great song. I love the ribbon and melody. It's got that whole metro subway it's and it's new yorkish yeah it's very glamorous new York the, the video was shot obviously in new york in a hotel mm -hmm. i don't know it was just one of those magical cool times a magical it, moment that song it, I, I it it was there was this wonderful <clears throat> i'm sorry if you if you don't know when mtv first came out when it only sh back when videos was a thing right and i used to want to be an mtv vj so badly oh you totally could have done been an mtv vj how old were if you I, though I was 18, 19, 18, 19. Uh, too, you were, your window was too early. It was too early. Remember, remember you had um, Martha Quinn. 81 had, is when I believe. She had the whole plucky out, right? thing going, but it was mostly guys and Martha and the, uh, I can't remember the, the black girl's name. Uh, but Downtown they did, Julie Brown. No, no, she came later. Oh. Yeah, it wasn't really wasn't until the um, the late eighties, early nineties when mm. they started bringing in, you know, like House of Fashion, and oh, yes. you you totally could have done it later. But yeah, that those first years, no, no, nobody. That was like hell. They didn't even know. Yeah, you know, at the time, they're like everybody thought it was a stupid idea. They couldn't get that thing off the ground to save their life. And then all of a sudden, what happened was is the kids were running to the record stores asking for albums that weren't there because they only were on MTV. Interesting. 
Yeah. I loved it. I didn't have TV. I was already out of high school and living on my own. But whenever I'd go visit my parents, um, they had a TV upstairs in the living room, but downstairs was a finished basement that uh, it's in Michigan. And um, there was a TV down there. It was more like a rec room or family room down there. And my sister and brother would often watch MTV and I'd come over simply for the free, wonderful family dinner, because of course I was living on my own at that time. And you know, you don't, I mean, I was uh, early in radio and didn't make very much money, but I sure. come home and get a great, you know, get, get some food, do some laundry <laughs> and watch MTV <laughs> with my sister and brother. My dad's parents lived in uh, really, really close to downtown Seattle. And Seattle was one of the early MTV markets. And I, when I went over there and I got on the MTV station, I knew nothing about music, <laughs> I knew nothing about videos. And I just literally planted myself in front of that set. Uh, I was so young, 12 maybe, and just watched. I mean, and, I and plus the remember there was- programming that happened to us though. <laughs> Do you because remember, by the way, it was about programming, even if we saw it as only entertainment. Oh, yeah. Uh, I remember all the old videos. And remember, there was only there was only so many bands that even had videos. So after like two or three hours, they looped. You're all of a sudden you're back into it. It's like, oh, yeah, this one's back in. You know, I just saw this a couple hours ago. What was your favorite MTV video? We all At know the, the first video is the Buggles video killed the radio star. Right. My brother liked Warrant Cherry Pie, very sexual, and it actually had a real cherry pie in it. Uh, oh, my favorite favorite MTV video of all time? Mm -hmm. it, uh, oh, that's easy. Or uh, like early uh, on. Uh, well, I knew the mute. Okay, video, the combination of video and music, uh, it would have been aha, uh -huh, take on me. Oh my gosh, I was going to say that. I mean, fantastic. The video showed real life, and then right. it also went to a drawing. Right, and, and brought to life. Um, yeah, it won video of the year, and unfortunately, and they won band rookie band of the year, and of course, they ended up being the one hit wonders, you know, of all time because yes. they didn't have anything else. But I it was my first year of university when I when that video came out, and it was just I mean, it played all the time, and it was always it was such a happy pop poppy tune that uh, it just it pretty much exemplified the '80s for me. It was like what was the sexiest video? I'm gonna name what I thought the sexiest video, in my opinion, on MTV was by White Snake, a band I don't like. Oh, with Tony Katane. Here I go again from 1987 with, with Tony like doing like all these acrobatic activities on a car. Yeah, you know that's weird. You and I are absolutely thinking the same thing. I, I immediately thought of her because she's become the iconic 80s video girl. Mm-hmm. Uh, because remember, back then, you couldn't get away with too much sexy stuff. I mean, you could try, but it really wasn't... It had uh, to be innuendo, in a way. Right. I mean, you, you, along those lines, you could also go down, like, the weirder gother girls would have been, like, uh, Rat, Round and Round, which had a weird appearance oh. by Milton Berle as several characters. That is kind of creepy, Milton Berle in general, even his name, creepy. Do you remember that, Rat, Rat Round and Round? My brother liked Rat, but that would be a song if it came on, I would just like leave because it wasn't my thing. Same as Molly Crew, not my thing. Yeah. Well, what were Men you Men Without back Hats, in... remember? The safety dance. Oh, God. <laughs> I love no, that. no, seriously. But in 80, not, not that we should go off the rails entirely. By the way, uh, everyone probably watching is like, is this a Flat Earth show? Is this a Flat Earth show? <laughs> Sorry, we should not talk about 80s videos that much. But it's. Uh, if you were around then, you have your memories. And also, even if you weren't, 80s music is played in restaurants and bars to today because it's suitable for all. all oh, yeah. Really. The supermarkets Still. now I, are pretty much all 80s tracks. And I remember growing up in supermarkets in the 60s and 70s played what used to be called elevator music. But now elevator music is 80s music. Sad. Right. Must mean we're getting old. What is that? What? <laughs> what? Just, yeah. All right, let's let's take All right, do you have what else, you have any other around topic? back to flat earth. Um, there was a flat earth meetup that Malav has and we've talked about Malav, Malav cocktail and he's been in the live chat. Um, he's doing a meetup Tuesday, June 4th at Whole Foods at Wheaton Donata Square East and uh, if you do a promo that would be cool for him. He's send Malav if you're listening send me send me that please again. No. Tuesday I, June 4th Whole Foods Wheaton Donata Square and the, the uh, Calgary conference kind of threw me in terms of promos. Well yeah, that well, and my the other thing. 
And you can uh, email him for more info, M-A-L-A-V-B-H-A-V-S-A-R at yahoo.com, M-A-L-A-V-B-H-A-V-S-A-R at yahoo.com. So he wants support. He and his dog, Shanti, would love to see you at one of his meetups. He's doing a series of them. It always bugs me, by the way, because I had a girlfriend named Ashanti, which is oh, different from Shanti. Right. The German Shepherd. Yeah. Who she I've met a- and you've met at the very first Flat Earth Conference. So have we managed to talk about all the things I said we were going to talk about? I don't know. It's your list. Um, Are we kind of jumping around? Let's see. There was something. Oh, it was about investing in outer space. Right. A video that came out by... They, they don't have a lot of subscribers. The channel's called The Compound, and it's about investments. And the title is called How to Invest in Outer Space. And I know none of us are going to be investing, but there are people out there who would purchase tickets to go around the moon or go to Mars, or you know. and then, of course, that money would get pocketed, and, of course, no one will ever go. But Andrew Shannon, the CEO of Procure Asset Management, is well-known for... Um, what are called in the financial world, ETFs. And he's out with a fund now that's meant to offer investors a pure play on investing in space. And if you go look at the video in the description box, it says commercial space travel and services is a segment of the market that is attracting more and more interest. Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk uh, continue to build their rocket companies, Blue Origin and SpaceX, respectively. In addition, media is being dedicated over satellites and uh, launching and building of spacecrafts, attracting all sorts of attention. And um, this guy, Andrew, talks about uh, a big opportunity for investors to get in on the ground floor with us a space trade. So right. yeah, that's being pumped out to people by experts in the field of making money, but they don't know. They don't know that it, it's, that's a bad investment. Let me tell you a really, oh, really yeah, bad terrible. investment. Nobody, nobody, I, I, I'm being deadly serious when I say this, no no tongue in cheek, nobody should in, invest in um, Blue Horizons by Google or um, Elon Musk or Virgin Galactic or even NASA. Don't, don't, and I know they're not a public company, but come on, don't do it. It's, there's, there's nothing, there's, there's, it, you're, you're talking about an empty cardboard box with a few pieces of packing popcorn in there. I wonder if these companies give their stockholder shares. You know, I mean, excuse me, give their employees shares. Um, well, stockholders. stockholders. Um, as gifts, know. you know, as bonuses. Div- dividends, I don't know. I mean, but if you're not going anywhere, if you're not doing anything. Well, we know it's kind of a joke. Um, I, I want mean, to touch on FE Core. I mentioned that in our opening, and I don't really have too much to say other than I put a link in the description box of the preliminary results of the FE Corp force the level task. Brian Mullen had forced the line. Brian Mullen removed himself from social media. And then the FE Corp group came up with a different and perhaps better way, but using Brian's idea to right. see whether or not we are living on a plane or living on a convex earth or concave earth or what have you. And right. um, Chris Van Maitre, who's on vacation right now, is going to join us. Uh, next Wednesday and talk about what the preliminary findings are and what he's going to be talking with Sandor and a bunch of other people. And he's going to dig into the whole thing. And what has been found is, I'm reading here the secret little message, that they need more time to analyze the data and check it for errors and calculate refraction. What they found were, that is flat, but there were surface bumps now, surface bumps does not mean a globe. It might have something to do with the weather and the wind that was happening at the time and that throwing off the measurements uh, on the on the posts. And it would be something that you'd have to go watch for yourself if you haven't seen the video by FE Core. You should subscribe to the channel. And in the description box, you will find a link so you can watch it yourself. So mm-hmm. next week, Chris Van Maitre will have a little bit of info to give us. That is if we can get him on the show where we can hear him. <laughs> Oh, are you okay? Yes, I am. Just a frog in my throat. I'm okay. We don't want you to die on this show. It must be in a vacuum chamber or on a white vacuum room. chamber or in a rocket, which is going mm. nowhere. Mm. Mm. Which is interesting in itself because I would have to sign a, a disclaimer. Hey, did you know? By the way, did you know? No, because they don't. They don't uh, let me know anymore because just <gasps> why? Why it's it's kind of like beating a, a horse that just won't die. Wait, let's uh, not talk behind, about beating horses on this channel. Fine, beating a 
tofu horse that <laughs> is not alive in any way, shape, or form. Okay. So uh, Behind the Curve is still touring. Even now, it is still doing film festivals. And yes. I got I got to rattle these off. You know, remember, it sold to Netflix last year. And it's been causing us all sorts of good things Grief. and bad things simultaneously. Well, the good thing is the word flat out is getting out to people. The bad thing is, is that they took experiments that Bob and Jaron did and put them out in the film in such a way that actually wasn't the way they were meant I to. am doing an entire chapter on the book, and good, the chapter good. is literally called Behind the Curve. Yes. So don't worry about that. I will I will cover it as best I can. But come on, we, we've all, we've got more numbers than they do. But since 2019 started, right, uh, we did, I'm just going to rattle off the cities, right? Chicago, Illinois, Fargo, Belgium, uh, Detroit, the Czech Republic twice. Uh, Daniel actually flew out to that one, apparently. Uh, UK. Russia? What? Russia. The Czech Republic. Oh. It's it's Eastern Bloc. No, but I mean, didn't they show behind? Oh the yeah, we were in Russia. Russia for three showings. Yeah, mm -hmm. in Russia. Uh, Iverness. I don't. I'm gonna have to butcher this. UK. Sorry. Iverness. Iverness. UK. Uh, and that that hasn't even happened yet. That's May eighth. May 9th is still happening. Uh, Newcastle upon. Tyne, mm -hmm. UK, and then the Rio Cinema in London, the Right Now Film Festival. It's showing in three different cinemas. It's the Right Now Film Festival, three showings in London ending on May 10th. This thing will not go away. And in some ways, I wish, I wish it would go away, but I have been <laughs> asked if you knowing what you know now that they would name it behind the curve and they would, right. you know, mock flat earthers, including you, would you still do it? And my answer is yes, because it got the words flat out, flat earth out to a lot of people who never heard about it before. Oh, yeah. And it's not going to change people's mind to not look into flat earth. Those who live in the world of cognitive, cognitive dissonance are going to stay in that world. Those yeah. who are curious people, which all of us flat earthers were originally, which is why we started researching to begin with, those people are going to research. And that movie will just be like... The first video you saw about Flat Earth or the first mention you heard of it when you thought, that sounds stupid. Right. But where are you now? And where will those people be in the future it's too? True. So and, it's a good and thing And don't in forget the the, that, I mean, the film festival was one thing. I mean, that's a limited audience. Mm -hmm. But the, the Netflix, it turned out to be a mind bomb for anybody under the age of 30. Because again, everybody under the age of 30 apparently has Netflix because it's the cheapest way to get the most entertainment. Right. And I only knew this because when, when I was doing the whole Canada thing, everybody had freaking Netflix. And so now it's this delayed effect where you have all these younger people that have, have watched it and now it's in their heads. And when I go to Starbucks, when I go to my local grocery store, there are people there that see my car or see me and say, hey, behind the curve or Patricia. I had Starbucks delivered with a service called Postmates, you know, you get an app on your phone and you can get yeah. any, any food or drink delivered. Sure. I, I didn't want to leave my house because I had somebody coming over to do something to fix my something in my lawn. So I couldn't leave, but I really wanted coffee and I didn't have any coffee to make here myself. And you're so. paying the fanboys basically by the hour, the guys that actually <laughs> wave the fans. No. Um, <laughs> well, okay. Uh, anyway, they're, so. actually, they're actually palm leaves that you had thrown in, flown in from like Egypt. Well, the guy who came and delivered my coffee now, I never saw him before in my life. And he had my name on, you know, the where it says to deliver to my address. Right. And he handed me the coffee. Oh, I, he knocked. I went to the door. I said, thank you. And took it. And he went, wait, you're Patricia <laughs> Steer. <laughs> oh, my thought, God. He knew your I name. I thought to myself, well, yeah, of course I am. Because that's the name that's on the information that you got with my address to come here. And then when I closed the door, I said to myself, okay, I've never seen him before in my life. Why did he say it in that way? And then I went, oh. Behind the curve. Must be behind the Wait, curve. Wait, you closed the door on him first? Well, after I said, thank you for the coffee. Because I just thought, I didn't understand. <laughs> yeah, I am. Slam. Yes, yeah, so, no, not like that. I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bye. And then I walked away thinking, oh, my God, behind the curve. Weird. Yeah. What really happened, folks, is is it's like, yeah, you're Patricia Steer. And, he's, and, and Patricia's like, no, vault, no autographs, you vultures. <laughs> Slam. Well, 
speaking of behind the curve, I would be remiss not to mention Nick of Phuket Word. I alluded to him in the very beginning of this video in the opening right. of things we were going to discuss. He did a video called Reaction, Dr. Grande, Psychoanalysis of Flat Earth Documentary. Grande. So, this guy from Wilmington, Delaware, uh, he's a doctor and he looked, he's done one other previous video on behind the curve. I'm looking at another, it. Looks I mean, like a weirdo. One previous video on flat earth. And then he went on to tackle, uh, behind the curve. And basically his assessment is without actually coming down hard on us, that perhaps we have mental problems. That's why we believe the earth is flat. Right. And Nick of Fouquet word went piece by piece through this Dr. Grande's psychoanalysis of all of us and tore right. to ribbons. So I encourage you to go. A link to that video is in the description box. Nick's cool. Uh, he gets it and he has great videos and I cannot believe he doesn't have more subscribers than, you know, 10,000. So we need to change that because he does great videos, so many great videos with very simple experiments too that anybody could, can understand and he's super nice. So go check that video out. It's called Reaction Dr. Grande, Grande, Grande Soy Latte, Grande Psychoanalysis. <laughs> Grande. Phuket Word, P-H-U-K-E-T Word. Word. Did, um, did David tell you his little story when he went to the mu music festival just a couple days ago? Um, I, I know a little bit about uh, a t-shirt, I mean a sweatshirt. So he, with a close he, friend was, of he, was, he was introduced to this one kid. I'm going to butcher the story. Oh, this Dave. is a whole different story. Okay, go Yeah, if, if, if David's in chat, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to butcher it. He was. Uh, where where he point he is he's in there mm. no damn it no he's I'm not to, here. i'm totally i'm totally gonna butcher it quick tell uh, the story while he's coming okay on. yes so <laughs> something the effect was uh, david was introduced to him as as a flat earther hear you can you hear me yes oh man i hope wonder if they can hear me all I'm right well we're gonna take you, talk. you keep talking, you're going to do something with the cat. Okay, I'll keep talking. So real quick, anyway, so David was was introduced to this kid as a flat earther, but the kid didn't know David's name. And he goes, oh, are you Mark Sargent? <laughs> and the guy, and David goes, no, no, I'm not. But he's a, he's a, he's a friend of mine. And uh, anyway, that was, I thought that was really cute because the guy didn't know. Anyway, so that's all I got. I'm sorry, I, something happened with the audio. For some reason, uh, I'm, I'm it blinked, and it now I got nothing. Let me check. I could leave and come back, but we're kind of wrapping up anyway, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, we are. We are wrapping up. So I'm going to check and see. Wait, I've noticed because I'm listening live. They can hear me, but you can't hear me. Oh no, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap up, but I know everyone can hear me and Mark. Why is this happening to us? Why? Why? Anyway. Mwah. Goodbye. Love you. Leave a thumbs up and a comment. Mark, wrap it up. Uh, stay flat. George Clooney, Hail Hydra, Go Power Coin. Uh, read my book when it, com <coughs> when it comes out and I'm dying. There and that's go. how we do it. Goodbye. Flat Earth.